All right, so today I want to go over the new one versus one ladder maps that have just been announced for the new multiplayer season in StarCraft 2. It's expected to start somewhere around the 28th of November. And in this video, I want to give you my initial impressions on the map before obviously playing a whole lot of games on them just because it's a little bit too soon for that. We only just now know which of the maps will actually be chosen from the Team Liquid map contest. Now, before we jump into the actual map reviews, I wanted to just talk about about the current map pool for just a little bit and I guess balance when it comes to maps in general. So if we talk about StarCraft 1 for just a little bit, right? Back in StarCraft 1, at some point they just simply stopped releasing balance patches entirely. This is before esports was really big in general, it really was only played competitively over in South Korea and Blizzard at some point just simply stopped releasing balance patches pretty much all together. Now, at that point, they essentially started balancing the game around maps instead. So say, for example, Protoss was doing a little bit too well, they would adjust the maps so that Protoss wasn't doing as well anymore. And the same for the other races as well. And what ended up happening over time is that StarCraft 1 was actually an extremely balanced and well-played game because the maps were just simply crafted around the highest level of play. And I've always kind of liked that mindset in general. Now, obviously, with the new ladder season, and I'm expecting the new big multiplayer balance overhaul to go live as well. So sometime around the end of the month. And it's going to be an interesting, I guess, an interesting couple of months in StarCraft 2 for sure. Obviously, the World Championship series just ended. We have a new world champion. Um, so obviously, the next couple of months are going to be relatively quiet when it comes to tournaments anyway. But pro gamers will be preparing for 2020 and they will obviously try and bring their best game once again. So while there definitely is some room for experimentation right now, it's really only going to be a couple of weeks at best. Now, if we talk real quick about the current map pool in SC2, right? I feel like there's a, a couple of issues that we run into. First off, the maps are pretty Zerg favored. Zerg is doing extremely well right now in general. And I think at the upper echelons of StarCraft 2, yes, balance is an issue, but the maps are also really, really good for Zerg. And there's a couple, like for example, Ephameron, that aren't considered to be too great because you don't have too many uh, ways of expanding on that map. You're kind of forced into a very specific natural third and fourth. So it's it's a little bit easier for the opposing race to try and to try and punish that. But most of the maps are really, really good for Zerg in general. And I think that's one of the reasons why Zerg is doing really well right now the highest levels of play. Secondly, um, I also think that the current maps are not particularly good for Terran. There's a lot of maps, especially in like Terran versus Protoss, where Protoss can just simply deny the Reaper Scout right at the very beginning by tactically positioning their, uh, positioning their very first pylon and then like the gateway and the cyber core and whatnot. You can essentially deny Terran scouting for a really, really long time. And that essentially forces Terran to play the same build every single time or to try and play really, really defensively. So there's a couple of things going on right now uh, with the current map pool. And I'm hoping that with this new set of maps, we're going to see some change when that, um, when, when that occurs as well. So what do Zerg players, generally speaking, really like? Well, Zerg like to have big maps in general. Big maps don't necessarily have to be Zerg favorite. But generally speaking, Zerg does like having a lot of expansions because they kind of thrive uh, on speed, right? You can contain your opponent on four bases. If you're mining seven yourself, eventually you will win if you trade half decently. So big maps in general. Open maps as well with few choke points and high grounds. Once again, the swarm just simply really shines on maps where they can surround their opponents and come in from different angles. And I feel like the current map pool does that really quite well as well. There's a lot of different attack paths and not very many high grounds and choke points in general. Um, the last thing that I think is really critical for Zerk as well is expanding away from your opponent. So some maps in the current map pool, and I think it's actually, well, I say that, I think it's pretty much all of them right now. Um, you can essentially expand away from where your opponent is expanding. So say like your main base is over here and your opponent's main base is right over there. If you can expand away and sort of like in a circular motion, go away from your opponent, that's A-OK -okay with Zerk and that's exactly what the Zerk players want. Um, now at the highest level of play, once again, right, that's where the game is balanced. Um, it kind of feels like it's really only a couple of percentage points in the favor of one race over the other. And right now, I think that Protoss is certainly the one underperforming in that regard. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see, and I haven't looked at these new maps very much yet myself either. I'm curious to see, if we go a little bit more in detail, what these maps will look like and if we will have a more favorable, um, you know, trait when it comes to those high-level games in the upcoming season. So let's have a look.
All right, so this first map is called Eternal Empire LE. A modern interpretation of Cloud Kingdom, it takes the good parts of that map to make a larger and more suited version for Legacy of the Void. This version emphasizes even more of the idea of the longer path gives a better angle. So Cloud Kingdom, obviously, I, I'll actually show you. It was a very popular map back in the day. All right, so this map is called Cloud Kingdom. It was played for a very long time in the early days of StarCraft II. Essentially, you would have the main base right over here, main base right on the opposite side of the map as well. And now what made it interesting primarily was the middle section of the map and the different ramps leading up towards the natural and the third. I've got some great memories on this map myself. All right, so here's the first new map. It's called Eternal Empire LE. Now, yeah, I can immediately see that indeed we can reminisce about Cloud Kingdom, the way that there are several chokes and ramps leading up towards the different expansions. The fact that the first three bases are pretty much predetermined, but from there on out, you can definitely expand in a wide array of bases. And also the middle section of the map being very interesting with lots of high grounds and low grounds and whatnot, uh, definitely does reminisce me of that a little bit as well. Now, real quick, by the way, um, whenever I review maps, I try and be as unbiased as possible, but I'm still a Zerg player at heart, okay? So I, I did manage to reach Master 1 with all three races once again, so I'm definitely capable of playing Terran and Protoss as well, but I probably spent like 90 to 95% or so of my time playing Zerg. Just, just so everyone is aware, okay? Just so we are all on the same page when it comes to that. Um, I try and be unbiased, but sometimes I, I do get a little bit carried away. Okay, so main base in the bottom left. Main base in the top right as well. Let's have a look at the bases on the left-hand side and see how you would, regularly speaking, uh, expand. So main base right over here, it looks like there are several different jump-up points for Reapers to the main base. Very critical for Terran versus Zerk, but also for Terran versus Protoss, and I guess also for TVT. That way you can scout out what is going on, and this is one of the big issues right now uh, that Terran players run into. They just simply can't scout, and they're forced to play very, very defensively or take a massive gamble. So um, if I'm not mistaken, there are indeed multiple jump-up points right over here for Reapers, which is great. Main base is large enough as well to fit in a lot of Terran and Protoss structures. They need a lot of space. Zerk doesn't really care. They just get like, you know, a couple of structures here, but Terran and Protoss do do have most of that production, generally speaking, in the main base, so critical to see a lot of space right over here, and it looks like there will be more than enough for that as well. Standard small ramp right over here that leads down towards the low ground, that is also a okay because you can wall that with just a couple of small structures. Natural looks pretty standard too. There's eight mineral patches, same for the main base, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, this choke point right over here, I guess between the rocks and then also this little ledge right over here, um, that should be three by, or three, three by three structures. Um, basically three, um, for example, gateways or three barracks or something like that. You can wall relatively easily right here at the front. That has become the standard. It's absolutely critical that that is the case on pretty much all maps or smaller. If you make them any larger than that, uh, Protoss, especially against, like, for example, Zerg, would just be overrun, because Zerglings would come out before you can complete that wall off, or at the very least, not without cutting a lot of probes, and then you're in a terrible economical situation. Uh, so this looks very standard over here. You could, technically speaking, go for this, I guess, as your third base, but I think pretty much everyone would expand from the natural right over here to watch the third base. There's only one real path leading right here into the natural. There are multiple paths leading, however, to watch the third base. I like that. I think this is fine. Um, could become a little bit troublesome, especially for Protoss, I would say. Terran has, generally speaking, a bit of an easier time dealing with that, especially if they utilize the Planetary Fortress, but obviously Planetaries are uh, coming at a cost in the fact that it's not an orbital, so you can't drop any mules, you can't get any scans down. But in general, this looks like a very solid three-base layout that allows for a lot of variety as well. I like this setup here uh, very much so. So... When it comes to expansions from there, right, you could definitely go ahead and take this as a fourth. You could take this as a fourth with a rich Vespian geyser right over there. R this one right over over here as well as a fourth base. There's multiple different options from there, and that's really where I think the map will open up. So depending on the strategy that you play, you can decide which of the expansions you want to take. Now, a lot of players, and I've noticed especially a lot of pro gamers that play Protoss, don't like the rich Vespian geysers very much. I know that especially Showtime, for example, has been very vocal about that. He doesn't really like the rich Vespian geysers whatsoever. Um, I, I personally think it's a cool mechanic. I, I found um, over time, after you know being in the StarCraft community for a very long time, I found that pro gamers in general don't really like any of the new maps, generally speaking, right from the get-go. 
uh, takes takes a little while. Uh, now, obviously, the current map pool has been around for quite some time. And um, if most of the Protoss players seem to dislike the high yield gases, I, I don't mind it. Like, I, yeah, I personally don't mind it too much, but I can imagine that for them it's really frustrating. Now, in the current map pool, like, for example, in World of Sleepers, you can take that rich Vespian Geister as your third base. And I think that's probably where it becomes more problematic. Considering this would be at earliest your fourth, I don't see anyone taking this as a third. Um, I think it's not that big of a deal, but obviously if you take cons control of the whole bottom section here of the map, there's another base right over here, and obviously it's mirrored by the way, right? So there's another couple of bases right over there too, that do also have Vespian geysers that yield twice as much gas. Looks like there are some watchtowers. So this is a bit of a, let me zoom in just a little bit. Uh, this is a bit of a, a curious setup right over here. This looks to be full walls, so like high grounds that you can't like jump over or like walk over or, you know, I guess you can fly over it, but um, you know, none of these other options. This watchtower seems absolutely critical because I think it can scout most of the middle section of the map. And obviously there's another one settled right over there too. This will be very, very helpful to scout incoming pushes. Because for example, what I can imagine already is that a lot of Terran players would love to put siege tanks right over here and then drop marines on the other side of these rocks and to basically kite back and forth to watch the safety of those siege tank lines. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the, uh, the expansion right over here for the opponent. I think scouting this watchtower here is going to be massive because you can see, you can see a lot of those incoming pushes. In general though, gotta say, my initial impressions of this map looks very good. Looks very fun. Looking forward to giving this one a try. All right, so the next one is called Nightshade. Nightshade might not offer anything revolutionary. Well, that's what pro gamers want. <laughs> but it has a solid standard layout that allows players to choose from a wide range of different playstyles. Rocks at both turret base options help with early defense. The aesthetics of the map are like an organic version of cyberpunk with bright purples, pinks and blues to contrast the darker base textures. Okay, let's have a look. Oh yeah, that that is certainly a very, very dark map. Okay, um, so main base is in the top left and the bottom right. Kind of looks like a smiley face, am I crazy? The gases look eyes look like eyes and then there's like a little, little, like little mouth and a nose right there. Anyways, can't unsee it anymore. I have never even played on the map before. But anyways, uh, <laughs> main base in the bottom right and in the top left. So main base, once again, looks good. Looks like there's really only one jump up point right here for Terran, although they could try and move on the other side as well. This is going to require a little bit of testing, but I'm hoping that there's going to be multiple areas for the Terran player to jump up. Main base looks large enough as well. Eight mineral patches, everything looks good. Double gas is right over here, double gas right over here. Natural, pretty self-explanatory. Pretty tight choke here. Once again, standard choke with or at the very least it should be. And then I guess you get more options as you expand to watch a third. So, Zerg players will likely always take this one right over here and then expand away from the opponent, right? So, like I mentioned earlier, Zerg players like to expand away from the opponent so they can abuse their mobility a lot more. Terran and Protoss players, though, sometimes do want to expand to watch the opponent depending on how aggressive you want to play. So, say you take this as your third, it's a relatively short walk over to watch your opponent's natural, and especially to watch your opponent's third base, and especially if they decide to also take the low ground one. Like, say your opponent goes for the third base right over here, uh, or you go for the third base right over here, and then your opponent takes the one that is on their side of the map. Um, that is just like two screens away. That is really, okay, a little bit more than that, but it's, it's really not that far. Very curious. If you take this one, though, I think you are going to be at a disadvantage from this high ground right over here. Once again, I'm always looking at like siege tanks or like, for example, Tempest that can deal a lot of harassment from that location. Um, yeah, I think in general, though, this is cool. So what I like about it is that this fifth base right over here is actually pretty far away. So say you're a Zerg player, you take this as your main, this is your natural, this is your third, this is your fourth. Four bases right now in 2019 StarCraft II, and certainly not in 2020 as well, um, it's not going to be enough. You need more than four bases in most of the games if it goes to, I would say, like past the, the 12 or so minute mark. You need more expansions than just four. So I think you either decide to take this one right over here, which has this awkward like double bush right over here, right? Like you can't really, you can't really easily take that. Although once you do secure it, the base here on the high ground is going to be easier to take too, I suppose. I think though, if you want to go for a fifth, you'd probably take that one as your fifth base instead and then the sixth right up here. So you can sort of take like this, this quadrant of the map 
relatively easily, but not without troubles. Because once again, if you zoom in right over here, um, say you have this fourth base taken, and I don't really see a way that Terran and Protoss could really punish the third base very easily, because that one looks very easy to, to take. Um, once again, there's going to be siege tanks and whatnot right over here, Tempest right over here, and fallback potential for Protoss as well towards the ramp. That makes this a very scary position to come into. Now, there are a lot of surround options too, right? So there's a lot of bushes here that you can hide. You can definitely get massive surrounds going here relatively easily with units coming in from every single side. Um, this map certainly looks very good for Zerg once again, but there are a few high grounds here and there. Once, however, these rocks are killed, so there's some rocks right over here, there's some rocks right over here, and obviously the same on the other side. Um, I think that Zerk is going to have a field day on this map. This looks like an extremely good Zerk map. Now, overall, though, not going to lie, looks like a good map, but once again, that may be a little bit of the Zerk bias coming through. Okay, next up, we have Simulacrum. Simulacrum. No, it's probably Simulacrum. I don't know. Negative zero, so he's one of the one of the map makers, and actually uh, Maras apparently or Maris, and then Super Man were the ones that uh, produced the previous maps. Um, negative zero is one of the one of the well known map makers in StarCraft Two. So this digital battleground provides the standard complement of chokes, open areas, and choices of expansion. Defend the central bridges or control the forward high ground bases as a late game focal point. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh. This is giving me uh, like a Metalopolis vibe. <laughs> I mean, it really does kind of feel like Metalopolis, doesn't it? Okay, um, so main bases, certainly in the top left and then also the bottom right. Main base looks absolutely massive. Looks like there are indeed several jump up points, although they're gonna not necessarily be the easiest ones to take, but this should be definitely scoutable for Terran as the, the distance here from the main ramp towards this uh, this right over here is, is pretty long, plus Protoss can't easily wall it off everywhere. Um, still though, always need to be able to get that Reaper in, I would say, so it is critical that, uh, you know, that does get tested, so we maybe can make this a little bit wider if it needs to be done. Main base looks big enough though for pretty much all of your activities, you can do whatever you like over here, including maybe even do some cheeky play where you like build structures inside of your opponent's main base. But uh, I mean, I can already imagine hiding a hatchery right over there. Right? If Protoss decides to go for the wall right over here, I can imagine putting a hatchery right over there, like even like some photon cannon rushes. Like this main is massive. Okay, main natural third. I guess you have two different third bases you can take. I like that. Natural choke, once again, looks very standard, nothing out of the ordinary. But you can see right here, um, once again, if you expand towards the left, so you take this as your third base, you're going to be expanding towards your opponent. If you take this as your third base, however, you're going to be expanding away from your opponent. Now, this is where I feel like it's, a, it's an important distinction, especially for Zerk. So, whereas on a lot of the maps, it's easy to take the fourth base, like, for example, what we just saw in the previous one, whatever it was called, um... This one actually is going to not have an easy to take fourth. Yeah, you could take the expansion at the top right, but that's pretty far away. There's these, like, site blockers right over there too. Um, so I think that this is certainly going to be a very harassable fourth. Alternatively, you would have to take the base right over here as your fourth. Um, and that also, once again, expands to watch your opponent. So I like this kind of expansion layout a lot because it is not hyper comfortable for Zerg to just simply expand all over the place. Quite a lot of choke points here as well, especially on these bridges. So there's bridges set up uh, throughout the center section of the map. Once again, a lot of site blockers, lots of high grounds and whatnot as well. This looks like a really, really solid map, all things considered. I think this is my favorite one that I've seen so far. It looks really, really good. I don't think there's a lot to complain here. Um, once again, depending on like the amount of uh, Reaper Scouts that can indeed get in. No Watchtowers either. Um, I'm personally a fan of removing the Watchtowers off of maps. The thing is, uh, most of the time, right, for Zerg players, there's about zero reason not to have a Watchtower. So at the highest level of play, whenever there's a map with a Watchtower, usually we'll see Zerg players take those. Um, and Zerg doesn't really need additional scouting information and additional information in general when it comes to map vision. So um, I think it's actually quite beneficial for Terran and Protoss to not have those. Um, this is going to be pretty far away though, right? So if you look on the left-hand side, it's not as apparent on the right for some reason. I guess it's because of the lighting. But if you look right here on the left-hand side, this third base is very wide open. Very wide open. Um, and there are indeed multiple different paths that lead into the third base. So the natural, pretty easy to wall off. Um, third base seems to have a lot of different issues. Now, 
I'm looking at this right here for a second. Um, I don't know exactly what the math is. I know they are reducing advanced ballistics range by one, so that's the Liberator range upgrade. But I feel like if you get a Liberator right over here, could you not harass both this base right over here and the one right up there? Hmm. I'm not sure. This looks like a really solid dead space for Liberator play in general. That's going to require some testing though, but overall this map looks really solid. Okay, and then the last map. Other than the team maps, I, I don't really want to go over the team maps. There's a lot of those. If you want to check those out, I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below in the description of this video. But the last map that I want to have a look at right now is going to be Zen LE. So once again, from Super Man, this map is set in a Zen garden. It even had two koi ponds on the sides. Wait, it had? Or it has? I'm not sure. Anyways, the main feature of this map is the two small entrances to the natural. Um, I haven't looked at the map yet, but I think we can all agree that we figured out the two map entrance or two entrances into a natural kind of sucks. Anyways, uh, the first one gives direct short path to the opponent. It's only one tile wide, but can be enlarged by mining the minerals. Okay. The other choke is six tiles wide and leads or leads. Man, there's some there's some bad English going on over here. But anyways, and leads to the third base. In the middle, there are two sets of mineral walls that make the path one tile wide. These paths make large armies extremely slow unless you mine them out. This map also has more advanced custom cliffs that were shaped into pillars. Okay, so this is the map to really go in depth on. Let's have a look. Very interesting. So main bases in the bottom left and then the top right. First off, by the way, the aesthetics of all of these maps is, is on point, right? Like the maps are really, really pretty. Hope they're not too dark, but I, I, do, like, uh, I do like the aesthetic here a lot. And the idea of it being, uh, being based around a Zen garden is pretty sweet. That's pretty awesome. So I think, by the way, there are indeed koi, koi ponds. I think that's one right over here. Uh, and then one right over here too. Now let's talk about the layout though, because that's way more important. Um, here's the thing. We had maps in the past where there were like mineral patches and stuff that were trying to... Basically what I'm trying to say is if you have two paths leading into the natural, it immediately is a disliked map by both Terran and Protoss. Terran and Protoss do not like having to wall multiple areas, especially against Zerg, which usually means that they just simply veto the map right from the get-go and it usually results in you just simply playing only Zerg versus Zerg on a map like this. Um, this might not necessarily be a bad execution of the concept, because back in the day we didn't have a lot of those like mineral walls and whatnot, so, um, you know, this was just simply not something that we saw too much. But I think in general this is a bit of an unnecessary thing to do. Yeah, it looks pretty, yeah, you get like nice tiles right over there. But no one really wants to play and adjust their strategies to the point where it's playable only on one map. You know what I mean? Like, if you're gonna practice StarCraft 2, the game is hard enough as it is, Playing the same build on every map is usually, like with minor deviations, is usually the better way to go. If you're gonna have to adjust the strategy entirely for one map specifically, you're gonna usually see either very cheesy strategies or people just simply not playing that map in the first place. Um, that's my main concern here, immediately. So, yeah, there's two mineral patches right over here. Yeah, you could probably put like a zealot in the wall over there. Yeah, this this ramp right over here is less tight. As a, as a choke point as your regular map, so maybe you can like commit a second pot. But like there's there's a whole bunch of things going on here that allow and force additional thinking. And most of the time, this would lead into a map seven map, okay? Like a map that everyone vetoes until there's a tournament that comes along that has it as map seven. And then it's gonna be interesting to watch because nobody actually knows how to play it. Um, that's immediately what my main concern is. So the double paths leading up towards the natural in concept, I don't mind it. In execution, I don't really mind this either, but I can't imagine nobody wants to play on it because nobody wants to adjust their strategies specifically just for one map. Maybe I'm mistaken though, maybe I'm mistaken, but I can't imagine this is gonna be an insta veto for a lot of people. Um, I do like these like grassy bits with the minerals right over there, but once again, it looks like it's a little bit excessive, right? Already, yeah, right now in StarCraft 2, we have a couple of maps that feature this. So basically you send a worker in, it mines five minerals, and then you open up the attack path. Once again, I love it in concept, I really like it on some maps. feel like this might be a little bit too much. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that's nine over here, and then I'm assuming nine more on the other side too. 
Uh, that's 18 minor ball locations that are spread out all over the map. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sold. I'm not sold on the idea. Okay, so if we take that into account, let's have a look at the other features that this map has. So main base natural, or main base natural and then the third right over here, pretty much a given. And from there on out, I guess you can really only take one fourth expansion too, which is one right below the third, right? I mean, you could maybe go for this one over here if you mine out these mineral patches, but that doesn't look like a very comfortable set of mining, uh, just because it's gonna like weirdly, weirdly take control of the map. I'm actually kind of curious about this base right over here too. This looks like an in-base expansion, but it's not. I guess what you can do though is make like a command center over here, then float it right down towards the low ground. But that one is so far away. If you need to like send ground defenses, right? Like that one is so far. I don't like this map. Nope. My initial impressions of this map is that it looks like a map seven map, which is not a compliment. Um, it looks beautiful. The aesthetics are great, but I don't think a lot of people would want to play this map just because it's too different. <sighs> I love the aesthetics. I think it's really pretty. There's some cool ideas here at play, but just because there's too many of those cool ideas in one map, I'm a little bit worried nobody actually really wants to play it. Do you think I'm fair? Let me know down below in the comment section. Alrighty, so what that means is that the final ladder map pool will be the following. Triton, Ephemeron, World of Sleepers, and I know that this is a, a disliked map by many pro gamers, once again, especially Protoss players, uh, Zen, Simulacrum, Nightshade and Eternal Empire LE. Maybe Zen LE, right? Even though it's a pretty map, but I would like to see that maybe replaced with a little bit more of an experimental map, like for example, what we had with Redshift. I really, really enjoyed Redshift. I thought Redshift was a fun map. I mean, I know a lot of people didn't necessarily like playing on this one either, but it created some ridiculous games where you had this main base right over here, natural right over here, and then another in-base expansion with gold. And then once these golden minerals ran out, you could expand to watch your opponent's side of the map relatively easily too, and it created all kinds of very interesting dynamics. Once again, this was very much so a map seven kind of map, but this was a really cool one. I feel like Zen is trying to walk the line between being experimental and being standard. And the end result is that probably nobody really thinks it's either, and then <laughs> nobody really wants to play it. At least that's my, my initial impressions of it. I mean, at least as a spectator, I thought that Redshift was a, a really cool map. I, it's one of the maps that I personally instantly vetoed, but it created some ridiculous games, especially for someone who loves to cast and watch uh, professional SC2. Anyways, let me know down below in the comment section of this video what you think of this map pool. I personally think it looks pretty promising, but there are some issues here and there. Um, What's important though to take into consideration is that, yeah, the current map pool is pretty Zerg favorite, but considering this is going to be in the new, uh, like, ladder, uh, not just the new ladder maps, but also the new balance patch, um, it's it's going to be very difficult to pinpoint exactly what's going to be happening, so I guess only time will tell. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, I will certainly start casting games of, uh, of the new multiplayer balance patch and also this new ladder map pool as soon as the games are available. So click subscribe and then the little bell icon if you're interested. But for now, I wanna thank you very much so for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile all right. Special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much for the generosity. I hope to see you once again in the next one.